very happy to be here in Milford today to sign the 241st Municipal Community Compact with state government. It was an extension of the governor's very first executive order to signal out of the gate when we first came into office that we wanted to strengthen the relationship between state government and local government. For folks that weren't sure or aren't sure about what exactly we're doing today, I wanted to make sure I introduced that. Um, we chose two best practices. Uh, we want to look at our IT infrastructure uh, with specific focus on uh, challenges, threats, uh, security, um, and we want to make sure that we're following the best practices through the state's initiatives uh, and one that uh, Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito uh, is focused on are the best practices across the communities of the Commonwealth. Um, we, we chose to apply for this um, so that we could gain the benefit of understanding what other communities are doing in these areas and, and also through this process uh, it, it allows us to be uh, in the running at, at a higher status for uh, grants that may become available through the state. So we certainly want to, we, we have best practices, we want to show those best practices, and in areas where there are opportunities or threats, we want to make sure we seize upon what other communities have done in the past uh, to, to benefit from that. The next piece is obviously ADA compliance. and. Uh, our ability to uh, make sure that we look out for the most vulnerable of our community. Um, we think we do a great job, but we also think there's a lot of opportunity and, and, and things that we can do better. Um, and so we're hoping with this initiative that we're able to do that. The Community Compact Program is a voluntary program and it's funded and it allows the community to choose which best practices they want to adopt for their community. And every Community Compact is unique and it's helping communities improve their financial policies or update housing plans and capital plans or do some infrastructure audits. And today in Milford, uh, this is the very first community to adopt a best practice around making public buildings accessible to persons with disabilities. Uh, so I want to really give Milford uh, a lot of credit for choosing this initiative. And what we'll do on that best practice is we'll work with our Office of Persons with Disabilities and allow this community to develop a plan and then seek some funding from state government to make these buildings more accessible. This is a great day for persons with disabilities, not only here in Milford, but throughout the Commonwealth and indeed throughout the country. We, uh, I've been looking around and this may be the first state-backed program to support uh, grant opportunities for physical and programmatic uh, applicability with the ADA. Briefly, the Mass Office on Disability, we serve as the ADA coordinator. The ADA is the Americans with Disabilities Act, which is federal civil rights law. We're 26 years into it. And when the ADA was created, they said to all local governments and, and state governments under Title II of the ADA that you had to have a self-evaluation and transition plan by 1993. Well, here we are now in 2016, going on 2017, and not many uh, local and state governments have that. So this is a great thing that we're actually finally now realizing ADA and the self-evaluation transition plan piece. So uh, we're going to be able to work with your local commission on disability. That's one of the other roles we serve in state government is coordinating all of the municipal commissions on disabilities across the state. And you have a very active one as evidenced by your recent uh, Milford Hospital situation that we worked through and that, that ended up resolving itself, which is great. So this is excellent news for persons with disabilities here. When uh, Governor Baker and I came into office, we brought with us our experiences as respective selectmen in our hometown. Uh, this work at the local level, especially by boards of selectmen, uh, these are volunteers who are working hard to make sure that they are delivering services to the people that live in their communities. So when we came into office, we wanted a program that would really really uh, connect state government and local government and allow this to evolve from the grassroots up. Um, and being here in the selectmen's room at this beautiful town hall in Milford brings me back to my days when I served on the board in Shrewsbury. And I just know how important it is for uh, communities like Milford and others across our state to embed these best practices into their governance, become more professional and more engaged with their citizenry, and really build out a stronger community. You know, you've got 
great schools, you got a safety net that binds the community together, and jobs and opportunities that really are available for people to build a life around. You've got all that here in Milford, and this community compact program will just add more to what you offer to all people here in this great community. A lot of times people have talked about unfunded mandates on Beacon Hill and how difficult those are for communities. Uh, we have lived through that together and trying to solve those problems by looking at towns across the Commonwealth, 241 of which offer best practices, is a truly wonderful program. I know that I'm going to continue to fight for its funding up there on in the Senate. Uh, I'm sure Representative-elect Murray will. I know that uh, John Fernandez has. And uh, it's overall a great program. I'm proud to be here and proud to support it. I was at an event up in Worcester where the governor said, you are not going to rest until you, all, you have all 351 cities and towns signed up before. The term is over, and uh, I think that's going to happen. And I appreciate it, and, and I congratulate the town for you know the selectmen and, and Rick and, and the leadership here for picking these two issues. They're critical. They're at the forefront. Um, we have to both make accessible, but in a protected way, our our IT. And um, you can't access government if you can't get to government. And so making sure that all of our our buildings are compliant is important. And I know Milford has put a great focus on that in the last few years, and this is going to help elevate and move that along. So I'm very grateful for the opportunity to have uh, participated in this, but really for your leadership on it and for the leadership of the community in moving this direction. So thank you, Karen. Thank you, members of the board and rec for doing this. Today we're signing the 241st Community Compact, but so some other communities have already adopted their best practices. <coughs> I'll give you an example. One community, a smaller community, did not have written financial policies in place. They were able to work with our Department of Revenue and, in, and adopt financial policies at the local level, which led to an upgrade in their bond rating as a municipality. There are some communities that are smaller, like in Western Massachusetts, where they have a declining school enrollments, so they're trying to better manage administrative costs and still deliver quality education to the students in that area. Or how about an area up in like the Littleton area, where they have formed a transportation management association to help move people around the community, whether it's by bus or through at rail stops connecting to places of employment or using uh, bikeways to move people around in a, in, a, in a way as well. So there's a whole bunch of things going on at the local level that for communities maybe they've been wanting to get to but they've been on the back burner and this compact program allows it to become a priority and it comes with funding from the state and they have up to two years to include the best practice in their program. So overall, uh, it's, uh, it's working and I endeavor to get to all 351 cities and towns over the next year and I'm, I'm very pleased that our administration has been able to strengthen uh, the relationship with all of our cities and towns here in Massachusetts. Hey everybody, this is Tim Coet. Make sure you check out full episodes of The Milford Informer on Milford TV. New episodes air every Friday night at 7.30 p.m. and then re-air frequently over the course of the weekend. Milford TV can be found on Comcast Channel 8 and Verizon Channel 38. And if you live in the Milford area and have an idea for a news story, you can contact us at news at milfordtv.net.